I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. So we have with us today a man by the name of PJ Calvis. And PJ is a man who has a whole lot of talents, but we have to focus on one specifically today. But before we get to that, I do want to mention in passing, he has black belt in many arts, as I understand, as well as uh, many other areas in his life that are colorful. And what I'm introducing and interviewing him today about is his book. And basically, from what I understand, I did a little bit of reading. I'm guilty of not being that great of a reader. I didn't finish it, but I, I definitely looked into it. And as I was explained about you, is that the fascinating thing about this book, although it's about a female, is that in many ways, well, it's the reality of the world that's coming. But more than that, it's sort of like a mirror image of you. Like a lot of its personality characteristics and traits are you. So let's jump in. Tell us a little about yourself, your book. I'll stop I, talking. Yeah, I say that every every book is a is a mirror of the the author in some way, or is either the the real life or the the author of fantasies or or what the author thinks that being a, in another life will be. I mean, I spent the last 30 to 40 years of my life um, inside of a dojo, kind of learning to fight multiple things. And, and I have actually been more inspired in general by my female training partners and my female students than the male ones, because man, they just, we just want to power through we want to use our strength and 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 women are way smarter about how they do they use the technique they they when they're fighting they they tend to avoid shock and avoid uh unnecessary uh uses of strength so it's it's I, i've learned so many so much from them that when i think about like perfect technique i tend to remember more my female counterparts my female partners than than my my male uh, training partner. So I, that when I started to write about it, um, it felt more natural. And on top of that, because the, 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 the story is a story of, I want it, I want it to be about the, the um, conflict and the contrast between the, the hardcore violent side of mixed martial arts with the, the theoretically super soft and gentle art of Tai Chi because you don't see these things for like, okay, I'm going to put a female Tai Chi fighter that is a beast. That's going to create all the conflicts and all the contrast that I can, that I can do to, that, that I need to, to build these yin and yang side of the story that is the, a, a person that is naturally violent, but wants to, but everything around her is soft and, and but she wants to break through that anyway. Interesting. So I, I go to the gym every day, like I train five, six times a week. And some of my 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 female counterparts, that she they they beat my ass. That woman on the main character in the book, she has the ambition of proving that a woman can beat a man, she, but she puts herself against other guys that know how to do it, her much bigger than her. So she loses as well. It's not one of those stories that oh, she's the best, she, she beats everyone. No, she loses quite a lot. Right. This book. Um, can I speak a little freely about yeah, the book? Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. So the, the the piece of it is that we're now dealing with this concern of artificial intelligence and how much it's going to take over. And she sort of gets a taste for it because she's allowed to have it like ingrained into her brain. And it, it's uh, it's just fascinating. And I mean, I don't know how long it takes for you to write a book, but I'm imagining that you were thinking of this book before artificial intelligence became hot on the news. So yes. I, I I'll, I'll say that this book is about the, the first glimpses of the story. My first attempts to have the story right are about 10 years old. Wow. Yeah. So I, I cause it started with the, the martial arts story and the, the curiosity about that is like I my first contact with with martial arts was with kung fu when I was a kid I was like watching those kung fu movies where like oh that's what I wanted to do. it's like so fascinating I wanted to do that and and I and that and and 
Kung Fu was the first martial arts I learned and I, I got my first black belt in 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 tempo and in and in, and mm -hmm. in, in, I always got fascinated by the idea uh, by the thought that that the ancient Chinese and the old masters of the past they they got inspiration from how animals fought and and they 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 developed their own styles. When I was a kid, about that same time, my fascination was with ants and bees. So as imagine like little me, 10, 11 years old, there was like, oh my God, look at these bees and these ants. They all like these colonies operate as one. And right. when I saw someone saying like, yeah, this guy got developed a style based on a tiger, based on a, on a viper, based on a crane. It's like how would fighting like a bee or like a swarm of bees or a colony of ants be? And my entire life, that was one of those recurring thoughts that never left my head. <laughs> one day I read about the story that there were scientists since the 70s that were trying to develop ways to, to connect computers to a brain and, and, and establish interface, brain computers interfaces, which is something that, that their companies are developing right now, right? And, and that thought that a comp that you could put something, plug something directly in your brain for like, okay, if I can put something in my brain and someone else can put something on their brain, we can connect our brains. Suddenly my dream, my my childhood dream of, of fighting like bees or ants are possible. So it's possible. Oh, so we can, wow. we can do that. You mean a, you're talking about a teammate? Yeah. So we can find wow. a group. And that's that's the, the whole story has been, I, it's something that I've been thinking about since I was a kid, but 10 years ago, when I saw this connector, like, oh, that's great. And I needed a, a villain for that, I needed a, or an antagonist. And I, 10 years ago, I started, about the same time, I started to, to read about, because I'm, I, I love technology. I've been up to date on, on that. I started my career as a programmer um, when I was 13 years old. So I felt like, okay, this is, and artificial intelligence is a, is a good antagonist for this because it's a potential threat, but it's also is an intelligence that is infinitely scalable. It can grow nonstop, right? And our brains are, are limited to our scope. But if we can connect our brains among ourselves, it becomes scalable as well. So it can actually become as smart as, as a growing, fast growing artificial intelligence. But then there's another, there are new challenges that, okay, if we connect our, if you and I connect our brains, our, our brains, are we still- Who in gets to be in charge? Yeah, who's in charge? Are we one, are we become two slaves of this new entity that we created? But what is better? Is it being a slave or ourselves or being slaves to a third entity that is being created? It's, it's a new, kind of dynamic that we have in a set of decisions that we are not prepared to 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 decide right now but we are being kind of being forced to to think about and make decisions about it as a society because this thing is evolving way too fast right in front of us right and this is all discussed in the book to some degree right it's, i mean it's all all parts of what she's going through I didn't even realize that she ties into other fighters as a teammate also with this AI. Yeah, that's that's kind of basically the core <laughs> of our experiment is that so there are three main characters there. There is Yin Yin that is this fighter Correct. and she connects her brain to the two scientists that are creating their work, having working on the on the technology that connects brains as well. So they connect because the, their experiment is that we are two nerds that if we can connect two male nerds if you can connect to a female fighter and we can all fight and you can also think science when we we when we connect then we have proof that our brains are actually operating as one you know wow. the 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 calculations that the the real scientists in this world are are doing they say that two brains two moderately intelligent or even lower on a lower intelligent intelligence level brains if they connect today they get in, they get smarter they are, they will be smarter than einstein so that's the level of, of incredible potential that we have ahead of us but it's also scary because there's all the other implications around it right she, and, and she fights 
as a team with others. That is like the that's why I actually wanted to see so bad. Right, right. The I mean, I have a lot of thoughts swimming in my head. First of all, you know, yeah, if you put a genius and with the skills of a fighter, you, you have the best of all. But what I'm thinking is, why would you pick a woman just because of the interesting uh, uniqueness of the scenario? You you could have picked a man. Yeah, yeah. I actually my first rap were were with a man, but then I I there's there's a, a, a another side of the story is this dynamic between yin and yang, the contrast of opposites, right? And the idea that you need to be balanced uh to be to reach like your perfect state and i wanted to have uh, i wanted the protagonist to be a person in conflict that a, a person of of yang a person of of with a beast kind of like, nature, like trying a to find a way to to do it and i thought like it's more interesting to have a a female beast than a male beast because a female beast she would need to fight against her own body or against her own, uh, she, in order to be that that violent, uh, in, incredible fighter, she would need to be much better to perform in the ways that it, to to achieve her 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 goal. So I think that that created a a better a better character for me and and a, a better journey for her as well. Interesting, and also when these geniuses and her are their brains are connecting, <laughs> you have to have a man and a woman working alongside. And, you know, we have different ways of coming to the same conclusion. You ask a woman, how, what's five plus five? And you ask a man and they'll give you two different ways of coming to the exact same answer. Our brains just work differently. Yeah. So you, that, if, you ask, if you ask a man how to take care of, of a, there's a, there's a, a kick coming to your head. The man will, block the, will just kind of hold the kick and then hurt the arms, but they will do it. A woman just oh, go under and just attack the man and, and from his back. So right. He, if he's and, kicking, that means he's vulnerable somewhere else at that moment. Yeah. And and all those contrasts were were interesting to do. There's one of my favorite scenes in the book is a scene that they they have sex while connected. And they, they then later ask if that counts as masturbation or just or regular sex. <laughs> but the idea that you could get into somebody else's brain is uh it's fascinating it's, and if, uh, if you could become one if two people or three people or a group of people can become one it's it seems to be a kind of a godly experience you know because you can you have so much brain power right. that what i it's kind of crazy to think about what your feelings your thoughts and your experience will be like when you can see it the, the the simplest thing imagine imagine being able to to look at multiple things at once right right and how cool that would be you know, it's, you know that's, that's all the, the experience of the book did anybody ever ask you the question if you could have a third eye where would you put it you ever you ever been asked this question no no but so some people say they would put it on their forehead some people say they would put it in the back of their head is a popular answer the best answer I ever heard, right here. <laughs> yeah, I would say that I would put it right here. You can you can look anywhere. So you, you can you can have a very very good look of of the face of the person in front of you when you're about to, to hit them. <laughs> Although funny. it's like kind of seeing your your eye at some point, you're having your eyes squished as well. Yeah, you don't want to get your eye hurt. Anyways, listen. Thank you so much for coming on. This was a lot of fun, and. Um, I'm looking forward to continuing further into the book. I, I think you gave some really good, exciting in points and pointers. I mean, anybody who's watching this video, I, I can't see how they're not going to pick up the book. So I appreciate it. And uh, I'm looking forward to continuing reading. Now, thank, thanks for having me. And I hope you like it.